Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And apologies if I won't know until I'm editing whether or not my microphone's going to pick up the crazy, like, howling wind and everything. We're getting a bunch of snow, as, as was predicted. So, anywho, amidst the snow, my Simon Says Stamp May 2024 card kit was delivered. So, we're going to unbox it and make a couple cards. As always, these kits are sent to me. I'm on like the Simon Says Stamp design team. I don't have to do these unboxings. They're just fun. So um, like always, I will have a link to the kit, the subscription, all the things. Because with the Simon Says Stamp uh, monthly kits, you can either subscribe and all the info is like listed with subscription. You are not locked in. That's the biggest thing to remember. You don't have to get every single month. You can opt in and opt out. And then there's like, you can now do add-ons and all sorts of things. And then you can buy the kit just one-time purchase as is. And then you can get most of the things individually. So I will have all the links. Like always, my links are affiliate links. That just means that if you use one of my links and place an order, I get a little kickback at no extra cost to you. Lots of helps pay the bills, keep the channel running, all the things. So let's get into the, the kit and see what's inside. So yeah, this is the Celestial Wishes kit. And you get a mesh bag. I love Simon's mesh bags. They're just like, they're sturdy, you know? They're sturdy and I love them. And they have the little, I think, cute little like paw um, pull on the zipper. I just think it's cute. So you get a mesh bag, which their mesh bag will hold all the contents and then some of the kit. So we've got the Celestial Wishes 6x8 stamp set. I think the greenery got a pretty dragonfly kind of like a moth or butterfly sort of image just really really pretty there is and it's available separately um a coordinating die set for this stamp set so i will link to that it is a separate purchase as it's a large die set however you do get this wafer die with um the kit and this one will die cut this like sunburst image or you could just use it on its own it's like a little little element. So you get those. You also get a little emboss and cut uh, folder. These little folders do exactly like it says. They emboss the image and they also die cut at the same time. Like that's a little wafer die with a tiny little piece of foam like embedded in the folder. So it will emboss and die cut at the same time. So you get one of those. We've got two little ink cubes. I assume we will be seeing the newer colors because I've had a lot of you guys asking me about because Simon's released. I'm not even sure at the moment how many colors have come out since the last release of cubes. So I've had a lot of people asking me like when when are we going to see the you know the newer colors in cubes? I assume soon because here's a couple of the newer colors. So zest and terracotta. So you get. A um, couple little ink cubes. I'm kind of excited about this. You also get a set of the tiny blending tools, the Tim Holtz Distress ones. They're so little. <laughs> oh, they're so little. It's cute. Um, I'm actually really glad about this because I was like, I've been debating getting some of these because I think they would just come in handy for, you know, little, little things. So I've got the regular size. I don't have the foams on any of them, but here's the, like, original mini blending tool like this is this is the size but you know that you can have your flat foams or there's the domed foams here's the this is the new are they cute what is it with little mini things i'm like all over this and these little these little foams are adorable they're adorable i love it so obviously you can use these with your ink cubes whatever's i just i don't know what it is i think these are adorable so you get that candy of course you can never go wrong with candy um, you get a pack of uh, Warm Tones Positively Dazzling Gems. These are gorgeous. These are glass. Simon's been releasing all different sorts of colors of these. Um, 
in the last few months. And yeah, you get like this little jar holds like, oh, it's over like 200 or something like that. And yeah, they're glass. They are not easily breakable, just FYI, because people have asked that. Um, I think Heidi on one of her live videos said that someone at the team like li took a hammer to these just to prove like they, they're even though they're glass, they're not like they're not going to break. So, yeah, these are warm tones. So like yellows, oranges, reds, pinks. There you go. Aren't those pretty. So pretty. So you get a pack of those. There's a little paw print on the lid. It's kind of hard. To, there we go. Harder to see on video. So you get those. You get one of Simon's envelopes, self-adhesive. I love their envelopes. Get off that a lot too. Simon envelopes for the win. Um, the pattern paper is Craft Consortium Ombre 6x6 pattern paper. Just, yeah, like kind of watercolor backgrounds. These are pretty. Really pretty. Yeah. Love these. So yeah, you get those. And then you get two sheets of Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. Great for alcohol marker coloring, card bases, etc. Because it's a good, a good heavy weight. And yeah, that's the kit in a nutshell. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to make. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. We'll figure it out. But as always, if you keep watching, you'll see what I make. I decided to focus on the little emboss and cut folder that came in the kit. So I took a couple pieces of Distress watercolor paper. And I say a couple because I tested this because I had to figure out what sandwich was going to work with my Empress machine in this little folder. And for me, it works with two, the two cutting plates. It has a teensy bit of resistance that I just kind of had to push it through. Like I always say, do not shove anything through your die cut machines. You know, if the if it's too thick and it doesn't want to go through your machine, do not force it. You don't want to wreck your machine. But this was like, it was like a little, a little speed bump <laughs> and it went through. So I was able to emboss and cut this distress watercolor paper and I was originally going to make like either a variety of cards or just and then it was like hey everything got away from me and I was like I'm only gonna make one card but I had both of these pieces because I you know tested the sandwich option out so I was like mm, I'll make two cards <laughs> so after I die cut the distress watercolor paper I just took that zest ink color and one of my blending brushes and blended that onto kind of around the the opening and I'm not worried about going over the like ferns or anything because I'm just going to paint over that anyway and yellow and green just mixed together nicely so it's not a big deal. So I did a simple bit of blending and then to color these I am using my Distress watercolor pencils and I already have a video showing how I made this palette. I have an entire playlist of all the videos I've done using Distress watercolor pencils. I'll have that linked at in the end screen. You don't need to, you know, make a palette like this. You can just use the pencils as is and a water brush, whatever floats your boat. But this is how I prefer to use it. And I just use basically one color. This is um, peeled paint, I'm pretty sure. And just swirled my little water brush into it and then just painted on the raised edges of this uh, embossed image. So just the little little fern leaves, not worried about it being perfect, anything like that, you know. So I went through, I did this and I did it to the um, second panel, exact same thing. You know, and some areas I just let have, you know, a little more water, a little less pigment, vice versa. So I get little variations with just one color. So after I was done painting both of these with um, the Distress Watercolor Pencils, I also pulled out my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors palette, added a bit of water to the gold, and then swirled that up. And I'm just, again, just using my little, this is my little uh, Distress Watercolor brush, same one I've been using for eons. And I just swirled that into the gold until I got the consistency I wanted. And then that I painted just on the raised little frame around this image. So it just gives it that little extra something. So I'm going to go around and do that to both of these uh, little panels here. And then, of course, 
of course, I'm going to add splatter. <laughs> I wasn't gonna, but then I don't even know why I say I wasn't gonna. I, oh, when do I not? It's rare. To the point where when I don't add splatter, people are like, are you feeling okay? You know, blink twice. <laughs> Honestly, you guys, it just depends on my mood and what I'm making. Anyway, I went around and painted the, the frames with that gold uh, that gold watercolor and then I just used the same colors so the the green and this time I just used my just a little tiny brush and then added just just splatter just added a bit of splatter so added a little extra water swirled that into my uh, distress palette there and then added the green as a bit of splatter to these little panels and then I'm going to also add a bit of the gold too just just because just because and yeah I'm not using my splat box because I I, I already just from unboxing the kit and other stuff out of my desk, I like ran out of space again. But this is why I use a spot box because it just, it gets everywhere, you know? So I just had to clean it up afterwards. Not a big deal. But got the little gold splattery bits onto here. Let everything dry. And then I just use my paper trimmer to trim around um, the panels, just kind of very close to the frame. You could just do this with scissors too. It'd be super quick and simple. I just would rather use my paper trimmer because even like cutting along a straight line with scissors the older I get and you know I've got astigmatism in both my eyes I I can't cut a straight line to save my life so use my paper trimmer for that and then I used one of the pattern papers from the kit and this sort of like sunburst image from the stamp set and got everything lined up in my Misty. And then I used my anti-static powder tool on the pattern paper. This is just going to prevent the embossing powder from sticking to anything other than the stamped image. And I inked up the little sunburst image with clear embossing ink, stamped it, and then I'm moving the paper so that I can stamp it a second time. And I was just making sure I wasn't going to go off the edge or that I wasn't going to overlap these images because they need to be spaced far enough apart because I'm going to die cut them. So I got them stamped and then I'm using just gold embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp. Sprinkled that over there, tapped off the excess. I'm going to melt that with my heat tool till everything is shiny and smooth and fabulous. So once these are melted, I'm going to use that little starburst or sunburst coordinating wafer die. This one does, this die comes in the kit. The other like big coordinating die set for the entire set um, is separate. So I used the little coordinating wafer die and lined that up. I thought it'd be a lot harder to line up, but it actually was pretty simple. Like you can just, cause you can see through the little openings and it lined up really easily. So got that taped into place so that it doesn't shift when I run it through my die cut machine. And then I die cut both of these. And then I took um, white cardstock that I had, you could use the white cardstock in the kit. I just used my Simon Says Stamp smooth white cardstock. And I trimmed it down to like three and three quarters by five like a fair bit smaller than an A2 card front and line that up in my Misty, use the anti-static powder tool on these panels as well. And then I'm inking up and stamping the happy birthday sentiment from that stamp set with clear embossing ink and stamping it twice to make sure I get like full coverage, etc. And then again, coating it with that same detailed gold embossing powder and then repeating the process on the second panel, anti-static powder, stamping the image a couple times with the clear embossing ink, coating it with the gold embossing powder, and then I'm going to melt that with my heat tool till again everything is smooth and shiny and melted. Always one of my favorite things to do. Heat embossing will never get old for me. <laughs> it's like magic. I love it. So got those melted and then um, I took the little solid circle image from the set and just stuck it to an acrylic block and then I stamped it with that same like zest you know yellow ink onto the centers of these pattern paper little suns just it gives it that little extra something and then I pulled out a piece just a scrap of vellum and I'm going to stamp this little kind of moth image from the set I also just stuck it onto the, the same acrylic block and I'm going to stamp that with um, the clear embossing ink and I'm going to stamp that twice and then I'm also going to coat this with the same gold embossing powder so got that stamped, poured on the embossing powder, tapped off the excess, melt this with my heat tool, which on vellum, you need to pay attention. Embossing powder melts very, very quickly on vellum because vellum is so thin. So yeah, if you want to avoid like curling your vellum or even burning it, it literally takes seconds compared to um, 
you know, how long it takes on cardstock, etc. So for those, I did use the coordinating wafer die because I do have the coordinating wafer die set. However, that one would have been a simple one to quickly fussy cut. And off camera, I actually stamped and heat embossed a couple more of the little moths with the gold embossing powder because I decided to put those on the inside of the card, which I'll get to in a minute. So to assemble the card fronts, I put just thin foam squares behind the little embossed panel. And then the little sunburst, I'm just going to adhere directly with um, craft tacky glue and then peel off the backing of the foam squares. And then I can pop this um, embossed you know, fern image into place. And then my little vellum moth, I just put little dabs of glue kind of behind this more solid areas of the heat embossing and then adhered that into place. And then for the insides of my cards, I took two more panels of white cardstock that are also cut to like three and three quarters by five inches. And I lined up one of the little companion sentiment stamps and using my anti-static powder tool again. And then I'm going to stamp that sentiment with just clear embossing ink. Make sure I got all the detail. I'm gonna coat that with the same gold embossing powder, tap off the excess, repeat that onto the second panel. So get that stamped, get that coated with the detail gold embossing powder, and then melt both of those with my heat tool after I put the lid on my embossing powder container, of course, so that I don't knock that over. Because it's if I don't, it's bound to happen. So got those melted. And then I'm going to put these back into my Misty and I'm going to stamp that little sunburst image around it with that same zest ink. I just thought that would be kind of like a cute little extra. So ink that up, stamp that onto the, the panel, repeated it with the second one. And then um, for my card bases, I just pulled out some of Simon's cream cardstock and these are top folding A2 note cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'm going to adhere the panels to the insides of the cards. And then those extra little vellum um, moths that I had heat embossed, adhered those to the inside as well. And then for the card fronts, I'm going to put Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of these. So it's going to pop it up, give it a little bit, give it a little bit more dimension. So got that in the back of the panels. And then I'm going to peel off the, the backing paper and then get these popped onto both of these card bases. So then once those are in place, technically these cards technically could be done. But I was like, oh, they need bling. The kit came with bling. I'm going to use bling. <laughs> So I just pulled out just the orange and the yellow um, little elements from this Warm Tones bling pack and figured out where I wanted to put them and got them onto the card fronts. And then I'm just going to adhere these into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue, just picking them up with my little embellishment wand. And once these get adhered into place, these cards are complete. So like I mentioned in the intro and during the unboxing, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. So if you just expand the description box, everything will be listed and linked. I will also have a link to my blog post. And in my blog post, if you hop on over there, I've got the photos, I've got picture links. It's a little easier to navigate and see everything. So anyone who's interested, just expand that to check it out. And yeah. As always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, letting the robot overlords know you guys will like what you see. I know I joke about it, but I very much appreciate it and it does help a ton. <laughs> so yeah, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.